Hi folks, welcome to the key concepts video for chapter 4 of Math 521b, which is pre-calculus 11. We're looking at quadratic equations here, specifically graphical solutions and solving quadratics by factoring. The standard disclaimers apply, and as always, there's a link to the downloadable notes in the video description below. Let's get going. We're dealing with graphical solutions first. So a solution to a single variable equation occurs when an x value produces the same result on both sides of the equation, or balances the equation. Now we've got all sorts of great analytical ways to solve some single variable equations. One of those ways that we can do it is graphically. So one way to solve an equation is to graph each side of the equation and look for x values of intersection. So let's take this linear example. We have 2x minus 3 equals x plus 2. If we were really at a loss, we could say, oh, I wonder if the number 2 balances this equation. Hmm, uh, 1 doesn't equal 4. No, 2 isn't a solution. And we could go on like that. What we would probably do is say, OK, 2x minus 3 equals x plus 2. I'm going to add 3 to both sides and subtract x from each side. And that's going to get me x equals 5 as the solution. This other way that we can do it graphically is to graph each side. So y equals 2x minus 3 and y equals x plus 2. And especially when you have technology at your disposal, this is a really powerful way to solve an equation. So if I do y equals 2x minus 3, let's do this one in red. It has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 2. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and so on. I can make a line that goes through those points. And there we go. I should put some arrows on the end. Now let's see what happens if we graph this one. We'll do it in blue. This has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and so on. Okay, that gives us another line that looks like this. And you can see that those two lines intersect right here. And the coordinates of intersection are at 5, 7. That x value of intersection is the solution to the equation. Check it out over here. We had x equals 5. x value of 5 balances the equation. Therefore, the solution is x equals 5. And it turns out that for more complicated uh, equations, any intersection that we have is going to be um, a solution. So let's do that in the context of a quadratic. First of all, we're going to graph this y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, and then solve all of these different ones over here. OK, so x squared minus 6x plus 5, we could put it in vertex form. We could just do a table of values, if you like. And I'm just going to fill in the values for the table of values fairly quickly here. If I put 0 in for x, I'm going to get 5 for y. If I put 1 in for x, I'm going to get 1 minus 6 plus 5. That's a 0. If I put 2 in, then I'm going to get 2 squared minus 12 plus 5. That's going to be negative 3, and so on. Okay, so just substituting in some values. I'll plot those points. Uh, apparently the vertex is at 3, negative 4. So the graph looks like this. Then it says, hence solve. So use this to solve these equations. x squared minus 6x plus 5. Well, we've already got the graph of this in blue. Now we have to put the graph of y equals 5 on. And all that is is a horizontal line at y equals 5. So think about where those x-intersections are. It intersects at an x value of 0 and an x value of 6. Those are the solutions to this equation. And you could try them. If I put in 0 into this, it would give me 5, so it balances the equation. Similarly, if I put in 6, I'd get 36 uh, minus 36 plus 5. It would balance the equation. Okay, so in this next one, if I want to solve 
that same function equals negative 3, well, I just need the graph of y equals negative 3. Oh, there's the graph of y equals negative 3. And you can see the x values of intersection. They're at 2 and 4. The y values are not important here because we already know, uh, I guess, what the y values can be, negative 3. And the original equation only had an x in it. Let's try another one. In this one, we'll have to graph y equals 0. So the line where y equals 0 is right here. In this case, we're really looking for x-intercepts. And those are occurring at x equals 1 and x equals 5. Uh, for the next one, x squared minus 6x uh, plus 5 equals negative 4. Well, let me bring this down. y equals negative 4. Ah, there's only one intersection here. And that happens at x equals 3. If I were to graph the next one, y equals negative 5. That is never going to intersect. So in this case, there would be no solution or no roots. And finally, we might look at a case where it's not just a straight line or a horizontal line. It's some other linear function that we're intersecting. So this is negative x plus 5. That means something with a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of negative 1. So I'm going to make that graph. But the process doesn't change. I'm still looking at where do we have x values of intersection. And here it's going to be at 0 and at 5. So if you have good graphs of your parabola and your line, then you can tell the answer to the equation pretty easily. You just graph them and look for x values of intersection. OK, what we can notice, every x value of intersection is a solution. Solutions can be verified through substitution. Let's go back and try that in one of these. Let's say that we weren't sure about x equals 2 as a solution to this one over here. So I could say, well, if I sub in 2, will that really give me negative 3? Will it balance the equation? Let's see, 4 minus 12 plus 5. Does that equal negative 3? Yes, it does. So this is a solution, x equals 2. We could do that with any of the values to make sure that we're right. And we probably should, unless we're really, really confident about our graph. For equations in equal 0 form, we're looking for x-intercepts. So that would be like c here. We were looking for the x-intercepts in that case. No intersections means no solutions. So we can do the same thing even if we don't know the equation for a, for a graph. Here's the graph of g of x, and we want to solve g of x equals 8. OK. Well, that means we've got the graph of g of x. We just need to graph y equals 8. That's a horizontal line at a y value of 8. And you can see that the x values that satisfy it are x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. Similarly, if we wanted to solve g of x equals 0, well, we just graph the line y equals 0. OK, and here these are x-intercepts. That's what they happen to be. When we said that up top. Equations in equals 0 form, we're looking for x-intercepts. Now here's a little tricky one. For what value of k does g of x of k, g of x equals k, have only one solution? So let's see. When it was 0, there were two solutions. There would be two solutions, two solutions, all the way down here. Two solutions. We knew up here there was two solutions. There's one spot way up here at a y value of 9 that has exactly one solution. And if you go above 9, there are? You guessed it, no solutions, because no intersections. OK, so beyond our uh, idea of solving by graphing, our next technique for solving, and probably the most important one, is solving by factoring. And solving by factoring relies on this zero product property. 
here's what it says. In a string of multiplication, a times b times c times d, etc., the result is zero if any of the terms are zero. That means the only way to multiply for, to zero is for one of the terms to be zero. And that's not a surprise. You know that anything times zero is zero, and there's no way to get a zero without having a zero in your string of multiplication. It's a really straightforward statement, but it's a powerful analytical tool. So if you have a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Those are the only possibilities. And that relates to quadratics in factored form. If we make one side zero, so x minus three times x plus one equals zero, then either x minus three, this first bracket is zero, or the second bracket is zero. That's the only way you can multiply to zero. And from there, you can solve each of those elementary equations. x minus three equals zero, well that means x is three. Or x equals negative one. And we already know from the graphical stuff that for quadratics there may be more than one solution. Okay, if we wanted to check one of those solutions, well let's check uh, x equals three. This side would be three minus three times three plus one. And we're wondering, does that really make zero? Well, it would be zero times four. Yes, it does work. This is a solution. We could just as easily check x equals negative one. So that would give us negative one minus three, and the other brackets negative one plus one. And we're wondering, is that zero? Yes, indeed, it balances the equation. Any x value that balances the equation is a solution. Okay, so in that last one, we were given uh, our quadratic in factored form. But what if it isn't given in factored form? Well, it's pretty simple. You put it in factored form. You need to make one side zero. Without that, you can't make use of the zero product property. Then you factor completely. And then you solve the elementary equations, possibly by just looking at them, by inspection. Now, I'm not going to go over all the factoring techniques in this video. I'll put a little annotation up right here. Uh, if you want to check out uh, a video review that I did of factoring techniques, or there are 100,000 different resources on, uh, online for factoring. But that's grade 10 work, so you need to be on top of that. OK, so we're going to solve in these next few. Make one side zero. Yep, that happened over here. Factor completely. OK, don't mind if I do. I need numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to 3. Those numbers are 4 and negative 1. And I make sure I write that factored form down. Those are not the answers, the x values. We still need to get to the x values. We have x plus 4 times x minus 1. And then each of those gives us a little elementary equation. Either one bracket equals 0 or the other bracket equals 0. So the solutions are x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. Those are both values that uh, satisfy the equation. In b, we don't have one side 0. So our first step will be to subtract 1 from each side. That gives us 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. I need to factor this. And again, you may need to check back and make sure that you can do this either by decomposition or better yet, by inspection. That means just guess and test. If I'm not sure if that's factored properly, I could just foil it out and check. And from here, we have little elementary equations. 2x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. This gives us 2x equals 1, or x equals a half. And this gives us x equals negative 1. Those are our two solutions. There can be up to two solutions in a quadratic. We'll try a couple of others here. 7x squared equals 2x. So make one side 0. And sometimes people get confused here. They expect a trinomial. 
but you don't necessarily need a trinomial. We just need to factor this. And the first type of factoring we always look for is a greatest common factor. So x is a common factor here. When you have an x by itself, you could think of that, if you like, as a bracket that says x plus 0. Or it's really its own elementary thing. So x could be 0. That might be a solution. That is a solution, rather. Or 7x minus 2 equals 0. And we're not going to pull out our calculator here. 2 divided by 7 is 2 sevenths. So there are the two values that make this equation true. And again, you can check them. You can put them back in. One last one. We have 4x squared equals 9. This isn't the only way that you could solve this, but if we're going to work on factoring by, or solving by factoring, let's solve it by factoring. We have difference of squares here. So we factor to conjugates. 2x, the square root of 4x squared, goes up front. And 3, the square root of 9, goes in the back. Each of those give us elementary equations, which we then solve. So we have x equals negative 3 over 2, and x equals 3 over 2. Those are our solutions. And if we were to sketch the graph of this one, well, it would look like this. It would have two intersections that are equal distances apart on the left and right. It would really give us those values. OK, one last one. We'll take a look at a word problem here. The height in meters of a ball thrown from a building after t seconds is given by this function, roughly, where t is greater than or equal to 0. So there's no negative time. Find the initial height of the ball. Initial means time is 0. So we need to put in 0 for time. and see what we get. h at 0 turns out to be 35. We can say the initial height is 35 meters. If they give us units, we should use them. After how many seconds is the ball at a height of 75 meters? So here they have told us h is 75. That means in the original function up here, we're going to replace h of t with 75. And we're going to find the time when that happens. So 75 equals negative 5 t squared plus 30t plus 35. I'm going to put everything on one side. So I'll move my 5t squared over, my 30t over. I'll have 75 minus 35, or 5t squared minus 30t minus 35, sorry, minus, uh, plus 40 equals 0. OK, from here, we can factor it. First kind of factoring we should do is take out a common factor. And actually, you could divide out that common factor if you prefer. If you don't want to see it anymore, since it's an equation, you can do the same thing to both sides. So that gives us t squared minus 6t plus 8 equals 0. You can leave the 5 out front if you like. It's not going to give you any solutions. And now we're ready to factor. This is a short trinomial, so we're looking for numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. Those two numbers are negative 4 and negative 2. And this is in equal 0 form. Okay, We have to put it in equal 0 form to solve our quadratic. So t equals 4 and t equals 2. The ball is at a height of 75, minute, or 75 meters. 
after 2 seconds and 4 seconds. Now you might say, hold on, how is that possible? But think about the path of the ball. It's thrown up in the air. It starts at 35 meters. It goes up and then it comes down. It could be at that height of 75 meters at two different places. So that's why we have two different times, one on the way up and one on the way down. The last one we'll do here asks how many seconds does it take for the ball to hit the ground? So if the ball hits the ground, what is its height? Its height is zero. So I can sub in zero for h. I'll get zero equals negative five p squared plus thirty t plus thirty five. I can factor this. I'm going to take out the negative 5 here so that I'll get a short trinomial. Minus 6t minus 7. If I like, I can just divide out that negative 5. So I've got 0 equals t squared minus 6t minus 7. I factor this. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 7 and add to negative 6. Those numbers are negative 7 and positive 1. Elementary equations come out of that. t minus 7 equals 0, so t equals 7. t plus 1 equals 0, so t equals negative 1. It looks like we have solutions of 7 seconds and negative 1 seconds. But hold on, is there such a thing as negative 1 seconds after you've thrown the ball? That would be before you throw it. That doesn't really make sense. And it tells us right here, t has to be greater than or equal to 0. So because this doesn't make sense in real life, we discount that solution. And we say, it hits the ground. After 7 seconds. In the next chapter four video, we'll look at um, we'll look at c uh, completing the square and also at quadratic formula. But hopefully, this gets us started on some of the basics. I hope that you found it helpful, and I'll see you soon.